Good afternoon. My name is Ben Weisenberger. I'm an application engineer with Ally PLM Solutions. I want to welcome you to the Ally PLM Lunch Bite series. These sessions are designed to briefly explore capabilities within Solid Edge that you may not be aware of. Uh, if you don't already know, we hold these sessions every other Thursday at 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central. Uh, today's topic that we'll be covering is on creating custom templates. If you have any questions during today's sessions, please write them down and send us them in an email. Uh, some of the topics we'll be covering today, uh, a working sheet versus the background sheet and 2D model sheet, uh, and what you can do with each one of them. Uh, we'll go through how to make a custom draft template. Also show you some uh, property text and file properties and uh, just briefly go over quick sheets and how you can make your own custom uh, part and sheet metal uh, properties and sheets. Uh, so first thing we're going to go over is uh, what working sheets and background 2D model sheets are. So working sheet is where you create your design and document uh, data. Uh, you can apply a scale to the document and design data and attach background sheets to it. Uh, background sheets are used uh, for graphics that you want to display on more than one drawing such as a border, title block, logo, and watermark. A background sheet can be displayed and printed along with any working sheet it is attached to. A 2D model is where you can draw sketches, create background sheet graphics, and also you can define cutting planes for section views. Um, this is also where you can do strictly uh, 2D modeling. Uh, you can also bring in AutoCAD files into the 2D model uh, sheet. So let's switch over to uh, Solid Edge here. We're going to open up a draft file, and uh, first thing we're going to do here is uh, go through the sheet setup. Now there's two different ways to get to our sheet setup. You can either right click down here where it says sheet one and go to sheet setup, or you can go to the application button and go to sheet setup here. I have a couple different options here. Uh, this is where you can choose your background, and this uh, decides which sheet is associated to the working sheet. We have A, B, C, and D sheets here because we're an ANSI. Um, you can also change the size of the sheet uh, to match the background sheet. So if we change this to tall, you can see now here is our sheet, and our background sheet doesn't exactly match to it. So we can change that back to wide, and now they match. Uh, we can go ahead then and create our own background sheets. Now to see the background sheets, where all this uh, information is stored here, you can't select it here, but to get to it, you go to the View tab and turn on the uh, background sheets. And the reason this is not always on is because you don't want other people going in and changing your background sheet. So on our background sheet, uh, what you can do is you can uh, draw any graphics such as title blocks and borders that you want to appear on your working sheets. Uh, you can also use the table command to create and place uh, tables as a title block. And you can use parts list command to create uh, and place a parts list. And you can also extract property text to display in the title block. And I'll show you how to do most of this in just a second. So down here at the bottom, we can now see our background sheets, and you can see we can highlight it and select it, edit it any way that we want. We can change the order of these sheets uh, any way we want just by right-clicking down here and saying reorder. And you can move sheets up and down. We're going to go ahead and create our, new, our own sheet here by right-clicking saying insert. We can rename this sheet. Let's call it Lunch Bites. We can go in and define its size and uh, units that it's in as well. And we're just going to keep it as a D sheet. Now we can uh, create our own background here. So what we're going to do is go to sketching. And we're just going to make a quick border. And we can also go ahead and insert a table if you want. We can add a couple rows to it another column. 
we can go in and add a title. Let's say we want to put our company name. Add another title. Let's call it Lunch Bites. We'll hit OK. And we want to place this down here in the corner. We can put it anywhere we want. So now we have a table down here. And we could go in and edit this and type in, let's say, date, file name. We could do any of that and place them in here. And then to get these to link to the actual file, uh, we have to use property text. And I'll talk more about that in a second and show how to do that. But for now, we're going to do a different background. So we're going to delete this. And we're going to take one from one of the other sheets and edit it and make it our own. So we're going to copy this and paste it now onto our working sheet, our background sheet, excuse me. And zoom in here and we'll edit some of these. Let's change the name to LIPOM. And let's say we want to add an image, our company logo maybe. We can go insert image. We can browse to our image and open that. And we can place that now above our uh, title block down here. Oh, that looks good. So now we have our company logo there. Let's say we wanted to add to this table down here. We could just draw another box if we wanted. And let's say we wanted to know the type of material that uh, the part is that we're placing in our draft file. To do that, we can go into our callouts, open up our property text. And here are these options. Uh, let me explain what all of these are and how they uh, relate to the parts in draft file. Uh, first, we have from active document. And this uh, specifies that property values are retrieved from the active file, that being the draft file. So if you wanted the file name, it would take the file name from the draft file and not any part that you placed into the draft file. Uh, variables from active document specify that property values are retrieved from variables in the variable table from the active file. So that will retrieve variable variables from the draft file. A named reference specifies that property values are retrieved from the reference file currently highlighted in parts. So that would be if we place the part into the draft file, it would uh, retrieve values from there. Index reference specifies that property values are retrieved from the history-based index of model files inserted into the drawing. So this means that uh, they're specified on the order that you place them into the dress, or draft file. Excuse me. From graphic connection, uh, these values are retrieved uh, one of two ways. Um, if you connect this value to a subassembly in a callout, it displays information from that subassembly. Um, but if you connect that call out to the top level assembly, it displays information from the part that you are connected to. And then from graphic connection to part, uh, displays from whatever part you're connected to. So if we go back over here, and let's say we want to know the material uh, that the part is made up from, we can go down here to index reference, select material, hit OK. And we'll just give it a name first, material. Now uh, there's nothing there after material, material yet because we haven't placed any part uh, into the draft file. So we'll just go ahead and place this here, center that a little bit. Now let's say this is what uh, we want our draft to look like. What, one thing you can do is use the block command to create a block from this background graphic. So if we wanted to make a block out of this, we can go up here to our block button, we can highlight our sheet, hit accept, define the origin, we'll pick this corner, we can give it a name, and now we have over here a block called lunch bite, and this can be used anywhere, uh, but it can also be used if we go to our 2D model, we can place this block now into the 2D model as well, so then you can do 2D drawings inside of this block that we placed here. 
So if we go back to our background, we like everything we see here. We can go back to our main sheet here. And you see it hasn't updated because we have we are still specified our D sheet as our background sheet. So we go into background, we can change that now to our lunch bite sheet. Hit OK and we see it change here. So if we go home and go to view wizard and we're going to place in this part into the draft file. Do a couple of views here and place that. You can now see it updated our material to be steel because that was what the part was made of. Uh, one other thing here, we can go up to application button, properties, and go to our file properties. And this is where we can fill in the title. So let's call this anchor. We can go over to our project document number. We'll call it document one and revision number one and hit OK. Now if we go up here to property text, update all, we should fill in those spots and there you see we now have this filled out. Now we have an error for our date. Uh, that's because we haven't saved this file yet. So if we save this, uh, we'll just save this as anchor draft right now. I should now update our date and our file name. So now something you can do, let's say this is how you want your uh, template to look and you want to uh, let everyone in your company use this. Well, to do that, we can go and save this, save a copy of it. We'll go save as custom template and we'll save this out into our program file solid edge sc3 template and what we can do is we can create a new folder here lunch bites hit ok and save it here now what this did is if we go and go click the new button you see now we have a new tab up here uh, on our new screen that contains our custom template so if you create custom templates or parts, you can save them here and always find them when you go to File New. Uh, to get it out on a server, you can go to the Application button, Solid Ed Options, go to File Locations, and User Templates, you browse to the folder that the templates are saved in. Another tip here, if we want to get that custom template to show up here at the Start screen or the new drop-down menu, we can go to Edit Create Options. We can browse to that file, give it a name, hit Add, and now it shows up here and in our new drop down menu. And when we open it, it should be our custom template. And there it is. All right, now we're going to go through how to uh, create a quick sheet uh, template. So we'll go ahead and open up a new draft file. Now to create a quick sheet, what you want to do is create the views um, that you use most often. Let's say uh, you like a front, top, and side view. Well, we can bring in our part here to a front top side and place this. Now if we also use this on our custom template here, this would be saved with our quick sheet template. So with this we can go to the application button and create our quick sheet template. Now what, what this is saying is that it's going to delete uh, all of the drawing data and keep just the views themselves. So it'll delete all of the drawings in here which is okay. So, so we're going to hit yes and we'll save this in our folder. We could save this out into our templates folder if we wanted and uh, access it that way too. So we can save that. So now anytime we bring in a part, it will be at a, a one to one scale here. Uh, we can right click on it and go to properties. And here are some other properties that we can include when we bring in the part. We can uh, auto balloon uh, the parts when they come in. 
Also, if you're bringing a part that has PMI dimensions that you want to reuse, you can include those as well. And then when you save this quick sheet template and bring in any parts, those will come with it. So if we drag in a part here, you can see that it auto-ballooned it for us. So that's just a nice little thing to use, nice and quick, to get all the views that you want. All right, uh, another thing you're going to go through here is uh, how to create uh, sheet metal and part files uh, that are somewhat custom. So we're going to open up a new sheet metal part here, material table. And let's say we always like to use steel for our parts. And we like to use 10 gauge steel. And let's say you make a lot of models out of that uh, specific material. Well, and then we can go ahead and make a basic shape that you uh, use most often too. Let's say you use a 10 by 5 sheet of steel. So we can make that. And now we have just a block of steel, but it might be something that you continually start with over and over again and you don't want to keep having to go in and changing the properties and drawing this square every single time. So we can do that. And what we can go up do is go uh, save as and save this out to our template folder that we created before in our lunch bite folder we can say custom sheet metal and save that so now every time you go new on our lunch bites you can open up this same part over and over again uh, another little tip we have is uh, when you go to view here you can customize the background here any way you want and save that. Let's say you like just a white background. You can do that and have it open, uh, this custom part open with a white background every time. Uh, but what else you, also you can do is if you go to solid, solid edge default here, and let's say you save this part out uh, onto the server, well, anyone that went and accessed it and opened it, uh, the background colors would open um, as their default colors here in Solid Edge options. So even if you saved it out with uh, the default colors and someone opens it with, let's say, a uh, red background or something, uh, whenever they opened it, it would open up to their custom colors. So that's another way to kind of customize things. And that's it. So replays of our lunch bites uh, can be seen on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash LIPLM. Uh, we'll try to get this one up hopefully by the end of the day or tomorrow. Um, I want to thank you for your attention. I really appreciate it. I hope you found this session informative. Uh, please email us any questions you may have or any ideas for future Lunch Bite topics. Uh, we won't be having a Lunch Bite in two weeks because of the uh, 4th of July, so have a good holiday. Our next one will be July 21st, and we will be covering mold tooling. Uh, once again, I appreciate your time. Thanks, and have a great day.